found this very interesting. Just go on Google and search up Pope Francis atheists, and you'll have all these different articles about Pope Francis being very pro-atheist and just proving that what the Bible says that Mr. Babylon is the mother of all harlots and abominations of the earth. Basically anything, because obviously Roman Catholicism is Mystery Babylon. It fits that description. So anything that is an abomination will trace back to Roman Catholicism, including atheism. I mean, if you look at a lot of the communist dictatorships that were heavily atheistic, they were yoked up with Rome. Uh, Karl Marx was, was yoked up with Roman Catholicism. So all the abominations, and, and you know, Nazi Germany, another good example, uh, which was actually a pagan empire. Nazi Germany was... was uh, paganism, and even they were yoked up with Roman Catholicism. So, and atheists are yoked up too. So, just proving that the Bible is right when it says that the that Roman Catholicism is the mother of all harlots and abominations of the earth. I mean, whether it be the Sodomite agenda, and Pope Francis even admits that the Catholic priesthood has a big problem with, with uh, sodomy, homosexuality, in the Catholic priesthood. They admit it. And the pedophilia, all this fornication, everything like that, all traces back to Roman Catholicism. And this is a new development, by the way. Fornication and, and homosexuality and pedophilia has been rampant in Catholicism for centuries. I mean, go back to the Middle Ages. The popes were, were perverts back then. You know, fornicating, you know, adulterous perverts. It's disgusting. But Pope Francis is yoking up, just proving that Roman Catholicism is yoking up with atheism. And he, there's basically now, because Pope Benedict actually would condemn atheism. I mean, the Catholic Church used to condemn atheism which is funny because they're yoked up with it, but as a cover, they would con they would condemn atheism. And Pope Benedict, uh, he would condemn atheism. He actually said, you know, that, that the Communist Party was atheistic and that communism was done in the name of atheism. Sorry, my throat. Was done in the name of atheism. Uh, part of a cover, by the way, to, to cover up the fact that the Catholic Church was, was behind it. But now Pope Francis is just, uh, you know, affirming atheism. When the Catholic Church and Pope Benedict, you know, would would condemn it, and it's funny because the Catholic Church says we're the one true Church. We go back to Jesus Christ. The gates of hell will not prevail against us. Okay, then why are so many Catholics? If you're a Catholic out there, notice this: many Catholics now are 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 so, finding the Catholic Church so liberal and wicked. They're turning back to pre-Vatican II Catholicism. So how does that work if you if the gates of hell have not prevailed against you and the, and the Catholic Church is the Church of Jesus Christ, the Holy Church? Um, why is it that you're turning back to pre-Vatican II Catholicism because you find your church so wicked? Because the Roman Catholic Church is not the Church of Christ. It is it is uh, it was founded by Satan, and the Roman Catholic Church, the gates of hell have prevailed against Roman Catholicism because you have a Pope in here who is so liberal that many Catholics don't like him. And how does that work? It's funny, how does that work too? Because according to Catholic doctrine, you can't um, contradict the Pope. And according to Catholic doctrine, the Pope can speak no wrong. The Pope is in, is uh, infallible. So how does that work? I mean, Catholicism is con constantly contradicting itself. Catholics are constantly contradicting Catholic teaching while saying, like, I, I've had some of these pre-Vatican II Catholics say to me that the papacy is infallible and the Pope, Pope is infallible. Okay, but then in the same breath, they'll speak against Pope Francis. So that proves the papacy is not infallible because you don't, you know, because Pope Francis is fallible according to these pre-Vatican II Catholics. So again, just full of contradictions. Roman Catholicism, and it's funny because they'll say that the Catholic Church does not contradict itself and does not contradict Scripture, which it does. There's many examples of Roman Catholicism contradicting the Scriptures, but they even contra contradict themselves. I mean, Pope Francis, the modern Catholic Church, is even contradicting what the former popes have said and contradicting what the Church Fathers have said. You know, so Roman Catholicism was is just one big contradiction. But anyway, back to the atheism thing. Pope Francis is yoking up with this science fiction false religion of atheism. And yes, I call it science fiction because I myself I'm a former atheist, and I can assure you that atheism is based off science fiction. It it's just it's nothing but just mental illness. It's science fiction. So here's the article. It's, this was back in 2013, but when he uh, first gets into office, he, Pope Francis tells atheists, you don't have to even believe in God to go to heaven. So, according to Pope Francis, atheists don't even have to believe in God to get, even get to heaven. They, don't, they don't, don't even have to be a Catholic to get to heaven. They can just be an atheist and they're on the way to heaven. Ridiculous. Uh, in comments likely to enhance, obviously this is back in 2013, but I'm just reading this as an example. In comments likely to enhance his progressive reaction, Pope Francis has written a long open letter to the founder of the Al Repubblica, yeah, La Repubblica, sorry, newspaper, 
uh, Eugenio Salafra, whatever, stating that non-believers will be forgiven by God if they follow their consciousness, consciences. consciences. Um, that's not the, what the Word of God says. The Word of God says that Jesus says, Jesus says, I think it's in John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Actually, let me just show you the verse. I think it's John, I know it's in John 14, but Jesus says he is the way, the truth, and the life. So no, no Pope Francis, they're not saved by their consciences. They're saved by Jesus Christ. Where is it? Uh, here it is, John 14, 6. Jesus saith, yeah, click on it. Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Not through Mary, not through the saints, not through the, the Catholic Church, through Jesus Christ. But according to Pope Francis, they don't even have to go through the Catholic Church. They can just, just follow their conscience. You know, again, contradicting former Catholic teachings. So how does that work if the Catholic Church does not contradict itself and, and is it's just consistent all the way through? It's not. Responding to a list of questions published by the paper by Mr. Scalfari, I think that's how you say it, who is not a Roman Catholic, Francis wrote, If you ask me if God of if the if the God of the Christians, Catholics, obviously Catholics worship a false god, the uh, god of Catholicism, or I, I should say gods, plural, because or I mean god, yeah, gods, plural, because Catholics believe in three gods. They have the Son, they have God, the, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. So they actually have three gods, but they claim it's one god. Three gods, but then they're one god. So they're three persons, but they're all fully God, and they're only one God. Sure. So yeah, the God. But anyway, but I'll just use their terms because they 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 say they have one God. Uh, they don't believe in the biblical Godhead. They they have the pagan Trinity. Uh, so that, yeah, the God of Catholicism is a false God. Uh, but anyway, I digress. If you ask me if the God of the, of the Catholics, I'll edit that, forgives those who don't believe and who seek their faith, I state it by saying this is a fundamental thing. Okay, so he's claiming. He's basically saying that this is a fundamental teaching, that God's mercy has no limits, and if you go with him with a sincere and contrite heart, the issue is, is uh, for those who do not believe in God's mercy, God is to obey their conscience. Okay, chapter and verse on that, please. And, and, and either, either, even, either, either way, you know, the Catholic Church, according to official Catholic doctrine, if the Pope says one thing and the Bible says another, they go with what the Pope says. So again, how does that work if your church is the one true church? According to, to all you pre-Vatican II Catholics out there, according to your own church, you have to follow the Pope whatever, with whatever he says. So again, how does that work if, if you don't agree with him? You're contradicting your own teachings. Sin, even for those who have no faith, exists when people disobey their conscience. Again, chapter and verse on that. You know? Uh, and go down there. But again, it's just ridiculous. What does the Bible even say about atheism? Let me show you that. What does the Bible say about people who don't believe in, in any God? Not just the God of the Bible, any God. Uh, Psalms chapter 51 says, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. Corrupt are they. They have done abominable iniquity. Kind of like communism and Nazism and all this other stuff. There is none that doeth good. God looketh down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did good or that did understand and that seek that did seek God. Sorry, uh, verse three. Every one of them has gone back. They are all, so they are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. So when an atheist says, "Oh, I'm a good person," according to that verse, there's none that doeth good. They've all together become filthy. Psalm. Funny because Francis won't won't quote that verse. I mean flies in the face of this thing of, oh, there's, just follow their conscience. No, the Bible says a fool says that if, if someone truly believes in their heart, because I believe many atheists just actually believe in God, they're just in denial. They, they believe there is a God, they just don't want to believe it. Because when I was an atheist, uh, I, I, I wanted, like deep down inside, I really knew there obviously, obviously is a higher power, but I was an atheist in practice, I guess you could say that, practicing atheist. But if someone actually says in their heart, like actually legitimately says in their heart, there is no God, they're a fool. Psalm fourteen one: The fool has said in his, sorry, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. Abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. He had a perfect description of atheists. I mean, look at Joseph Stalin. Look at Adolf Hitler. You know, look at look at Charles Darwin with his uh, origin of the species myth. It's ridiculous. So that's what the Bible says about atheists. But Pope Francis seems seems to um, not care what the Bible says because he says that oh, they just follow their conscience. 
Sure. And again, how does that work if you're a Catholic? If 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 your church is the one church, true church, how does that? What the? Sorry, highlighted that. How does that work? Is that you? What, what Pope Francis said just contradicted scripture. It doesn't work. Uh, the moment the Pope, so this is when the Pope, and this is kind of a sad story. The Pope confronts his grieving child. Uh, I'll read it for you. Uh, the moment the Pope confronts a grieving boy who feared his atheist father isn't in heaven, which he's not, uh, tells him that God is surely proud of his dad. Oh, come on. And it, obviously this happened a while back. This happened, like, I think, two years ago or whatever. But this is just ridiculous. I mean, so according to Pope Francis, an atheist is in heaven. The, get the kid's atheist dad, who, who died, is in heaven. Right. Well... I would agree. With, I would agree with Pope Francis that the atheist dad believes in God now, but not in the sense that he is talking about. Because people that go to hell, I mean, when someone goes to hell, they're not down there denying God. In fact, when they're in hell, they probably believe in God more than ever at that point. But when Pope Francis says, "Oh, he believes in God. He's proud of his dad," well, he believes in God, but not in the sense that Francis is talking about. This is a touching moment when Pope Francis confronted a grieving boy who was worried his father he didn't go to heaven or, or didn't go to heaven uh, as he was an atheist, which he didn't. Uh, atheist, I mean, if he legitimately said in his heart there is no God, he's not in heaven, which is sad. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, like, I don't rejoice when people uh, go to hell, but it's, it, it's, it's true. I mean, the truth hurts sometimes. Uh, the boy, who is known as Emmanuel, I think that's how you say it, broke down in tears as he approached the microphone and took part in a Q&A session with the pontiff, who visited St. Paul of Cross Parish on the outskirts of Rome on, on Sunday. According to the National Catholic Reporter, Pope Francis said the crowd, uh, or told the crowd that Emmanuel's father, who had recently passed away, was a good man, but hadn't believed in God. Uh, he assured the heartbroken boy that his late father was in heaven because God was surely proud of him. No, he's not. I mean, it just, it's so sad the Pope would just lie to the kid like that. I mean, it makes me totally, it, it just makes me sick, to be honest, how, how the Pope just lies to this, this grieving kid and tells him, oh yeah, your dad's in heaven, when he's not. Just totally sick. Uh, then you got that down, down there. And then, yeah, this one is, this is a, a little, little ways back, but Pope suggests it is better to be an atheist than, than a bad Christian. What he's talking about is Catholics, but so he basically, according to him, is better to be better to be an atheist than a uh, bad Christian, a carnal Christian. Hmm, interesting. If you're this is this is basically the uh, C, this is on CNN. If you're a Christian who exploits people and leads a double life, or magnifies or mag, manages sorry manages a dirty business, perhaps it is better not to call yourself a believer. Pope Francis suggested in a homily uh, on Thursday in Rome. So many Christians are like this. Uh, this is Pope the Pope speaking. Uh, like this, uh, these are, and these people scandalize other. Pope Francis said during a morning mass, that pagan ritual, the mass at Can Casa Santa Mar uh, Marta, according to the Vatican Radio. How many times have we heard all of us the, around the neighborhood and everywhere else? But to be a Catholic like that, it's better to be an atheist. It is that scandal. Sorry, I just, my throat. I had something caught in my throat. That's why I just paused there. So according to Pope Francis, it's better to be an atheist than be a good, you know, good Catholic. Obviously, Catholics are not Christians, but whole other story. But this is just ridiculous how how um, how the Pope is contradicting former Catholic teachings, and even Catholics are realizing that. I, I've seen some Catholics even there. Even, there are some Catholics who are starting to realize that. Hey, wait a second! The Pope is contradicting former Catholic. Not only is the Pope contradicting Scripture, which they won't say, he's also they'll even say he's contradicting former Catholic teaching. On, on atheism, because historically the Catholic Church would say you have to be, be part of the part of the church to go to heaven, just like how Islam says you had to be a Muslim and believe in Allah to get into paradise. So I mean, this I mean, like imagine a Muslim saying, "Oh yeah, atheists can go to paradise." It wouldn't work because according to Islam, the a Islam condemns atheism, and the Catholic Church used to condemn atheism too. But now, uh, proving what the Bible says that they are. They are the mother of harlot and abominations of, the, or mother of, of a harlots and the abominations of the earth. They're yoking up with atheism now. And again, what does the Bible say? Uh, the fool has said in his heart, "There is no God." Atheists are fools, but according to Pope Francis, they can just follow their conscience. Oh wow, so sweet. It, it's actually not. It, 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 he's calling he's calling it a bitter sweet and sweet bitter. Uh, that's what the Bible talks about. So yeah, don't don't be deceived by Roman Catholicism. It's a it's a satanic cult. 
and it was it was not started by Jesus Christ. It was started by the Council of Satan. It, all this all it is is just repackaged Roman paganism, because the Catholic Church what they did was they took Mary, they, they took this pagan Roman goddess I, I forget the name, and turned her into Mary. They took I think it was Zeus and turned him into S Saint Peter. And then they basically took all the, the other Roman gods, like the lower down Roman gods, and just made them into the saints. You know? And it's kind of funny because Roman temples and the Vatican are both filled with statues that people will bow down to. It's ridiculous. So, yeah, don't, Roman Catholicism, all of this is just repackaged paganism. It, it's just repackaged Roman Babylonian paganism. It's, it's all it is. It's not Christianity. So, don't be deceived by Roman Catholicism. God bless you. Goodbye.